Welcome to Royal Table Talk. My name is Latoya Conway Hampton, and I am your host. And first and foremost, I want to thank you for saying yes. Yes to the fact that you can give somebody else a possibility to live one more day. Who are you in the world? Whew, girl, me that gives me chills. Me too. Oh. Praise God. <laughs> I feel you over Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Sue Carter Collins. Um, my at this point in my life, my professional name that you'll call find me on uh, the social media is Dr. Sue. Um, but at heart, I am I'm a spiritual being here on the journey. Yes. And I am here to I've been through a lot as we were sharing. And um I and when I was going through it, it was like God, why, why, why? But mm. then one day God said to me, see, you had to go through that. So that number one, when you came out on the other side, you Ooh. know who you. That's yeah, the yeah. But number two, so that you would have a story to tell that everybody at every level that you that you connect with, you can relate to them and they can relate to here you to you. So I'm here to tell a story. That's what I do. <sighs> Wow, wow, wow. I am so fin feeling your energy through th through the through the electricity in a wall. <laughs> I, I think that when you talk about that fire and you this topic and, and this call to action is about changing our mind shift, changing your mindset, stretching your beliefs, stretching your values, going back and recreating who you are, because what you're doing right now ain't working. Right. And so I, I I feel for me that your energy is so strong. Um, I can feel it. It's so strong. It's so strong. And so tell me what in your life led you to have that major mind shift to even want to be a doctor. Mm. <sighs> um, you know, I didn't always want to be a doctor. At least not this kind, right? Yeah. And let me let me just share. I, I get real real about who I am and and Thank all you. of my stuff, right? I I have, at this point in my life, I ain't, ain't no shame because I've been through a lot, right? Yes, So in less than two months, I'll be seventy one years old. Woo! You look good, honey. <laughs> yes. So thank you. So that means that I have been through. I've been through colored. I've been through African American. I've been been through black. I've been through. We don't know what to call y'all. I've been through. I don't know what to call myself. So okay. all of that was stuff yes, that I had to heal from. Now, my mama wanted a doctor, but we were thinking medical doctors because my mama didn't know anything about PhD. And, mm -hmm. and she also wanted a teacher. And I, want, I wanted to be neither of those. But you know, God has a way of doing things, right? Yeah, and so yeah. I, I became, I'm a lawyer as well. I'm retired from the practice of law in Florida. Every time I have gotten complacent in my life, and, and stop moving the way that God wanted me to move, he's made it real uncomfortable, real uncomfortable. <laughs> Don't <And> so, eat. <laughs> so I'm going to skip over some of the front end, but I'll tell you in answer to your question, what made you want to be a doctor? I worked with the Tallahassee, Florida Police Department. I was their first legal advisor. I was with them for eight years, African-American woman in a world of white men. I we I remember that we were working on a use of force policy because there was a lot of issues in the community. I had spent months with this team getting the policy ready and we sat at the table and everybody, all of the command officers were ready to sign off on the policy and excuse me. And the chief said to me, I want you to go over to the university and talk to this professor. Who happened to be a white female. I said, I know her. She's done nothing of significance, really. I've read all of her work. Um, she simply mimicked what other people said. But in that moment, and, and he and I had this rather heated, heated exchange, but I felt I have, I've, I've jumped through all of the hoops. I've done everything that you said in terms that you society said I needed to do to be successful. And still at this point, I got three degrees and experience, right? Now you still want me to go to someone else of a lighter hue 
because they've got something you think to share. That day, I made up in my mind, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm done here. And, and, and I'll just be real. I said to myself, okay, you got the BS, the MS, the JD, get the PhD. You will be shored up on all four sides. Call me doctor, doctor. Mm-hmm. Because I got that. Mm-hmm. But here's me. <laughs> Having said that and been through all of that, this society that we live in, still question, still question. Mm. So that's like the short story to a longer version of how I got to be doctor. Right. But I retired from the university after 15 years as uh, an associate professor. Mm-hmm. And I said, God, I wanted to do a kinder, gentler work. I still want to contribute. I still want to talk to women. I still work with diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm-hmm. But I want to support all people, Sorry. my people, so that when you're faced with the with people trying to put you in a box, you have the skills and the tools you need to go outside of that box because you don't have to stay there. Just because somebody, my 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 supervisor said to me at that point, "You make a great administrator. Why why can't you be content just to be who to be in this position?" And I'm you know I'm thinking. Uh, that's white male privilege. You aren't content, but I'm supposed to be. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a little part of the story. <laughs> wow. So, so what I hear you say is that you've overcame a lot when it comes to walking in your own brand of dignity. Yeah. That a non African American woman won't ever understand, right? I don't know that ever, but it's difficult. It would be extremely difficult. To walk in that, you have to be. That's it and that's all. To walk in that, you have to be. Would they have compassion? Absolutely. And supportive? Yes. But to walk in it is different. It's just like yeah. sexual assault or domestic violence. Oh, baby, you'll be fine. You guess what? I worked with somebody else had sexual abuse and domestic violence. You ain't walked in my shoes. You haven't had six guys to rape you. And then you tell me you're going to be okay. Right. But yeah. yet and still you smile and you yeah. keep trudging. And yeah. so thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that. So the topic is mind growth. At what point do you feel your mind was stretched? And what strategies did you use to get yourself to a place where you can get out of that mindset to I'm moving forward? Where was that? And what was it like for you? You know, I would like to say that it was a straight shot, but it wasn't. For me, it's grow a little, pull back, grow some Mm -hmm. more. Grow a little, pull back, grow some more. Yes. And so I am coming out of a, a growth spurt. And in that growth spurt, I had to learn about the power, learn deeper, more about the power of the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you asked about three strategies, the first thing that came to my mind was we need to understand the power of the subconscious mind, which keeps us locked in place. Yes. It is programmed. It's like the program initially comes from the outside. But after a while, we buy into it and we began to program ourselves. So that was a huge foundational shift. When I got that, I went, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. I can change this, right? Um, It's not like a one shot thing. I got the understanding. Now it's trying to walk the walk which yes. I make progress, I pull back, I make progress. Mm-hmm. I don't want your, I, I, I'm sure they understand this, but I want to emphasize that progress, this mind growth, this growth mindset, it doesn't, if you haven't been programmed that way from childhood, it doesn't happen overnight because That's so hard. much of society says, stay in the box, be fixed. Mm-hmm. And when you start to break out of it, it is chipping some days bit by bit before you can even get to praise the Lord block by block. Yes. So I'm coming out of, I've been progressing over the years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to emphasize again that the fact I said earlier, I'm 70, I'll be 71 in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. 
age is not a I don't you can't come up with the word, but age doesn't mean that you stop growing, right? That's right. Yes. It doesn't mean it. And so you're constantly, when you have a growth mindset, you're constantly learning because you're opening up to new ideas. For more. Exactly. And so I'm grateful that I I stay in that space of I have I, I I'm greedy for knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm greedy for growth. And yeah. so I stay in that space, right? But having understanding the power of the subconscious mind really has strengthened that desire to expand. And and I I want I want you I want to go there a little bit. So you you mentioned going deep, and as I share often, not just deep, but deep and wide. Yes. Because sometimes we're just digging a hole. And then it seems like there's nothing on the other side, right? Yes, so then, yes. then we have to widen our dig. So yes. when when you when I listen to you think about, well, listen to you share about the journey of, you know, you go a few steps, and then and then you, not I wouldn't call it pullback, but I'm telling my story. But you call it pullback. When I go up a, a little bit, then I sit and wallow in it because now I got to go wider. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not moving constantly forward because I'm going deep and wide and then a step mm -hmm. up and then deep and then wide. You know, once mm -hmm. I gather what I need to gather and it is a journey and there's no there's no destination. I mean, we're going to keep learning and growing and developing until God takes us home. And then even there, we're going to be learning how to praise the Lord all day long. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I on totally another do. level. Yeah, yeah, on another yeah. level. And so I, I think when we talk about that mind shift and that mind growth, I, I think for me, I love the fact where you said, think about how your mind works. Because in my in one of my books, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Ultimate Freedom, this one talks about how all of that stuff was instilled from my parents, parenting style, right? You know, my stepfather, yeah. you retarded, you stupid. Okay, well, I couldn't read and spell till I was 29, but I'm not retarded because watch me go, right? And then mm -hmm. learning, and I had to learn how to not listen to that, right? I had mm -hmm. to learn how to not allow that to affect who I am as a woman because I felt like, okay, I'm different from everybody. Well, once I found out I was dyslexic, it made a lot of sense, yes. right? Yes, okay, yes, I yes, am yes. different. I just learned yes. differently. I got to touch it, flip it, turn it, rub it. Then yes. I can get it, right? Right. But for other people who don't know how to go within what would be your suggestion to learn how to go within your mind and see how you're thinking what would you suggest okay so the first thing i would suggest i'm so glad you asked turn off the daggone noise turn okay. off that tv turn off that social media social media is it's not social to that extent right okay. it is very debilitating in terms of it shows you a snapshot in reality, which really is just marketing. It ain't real. It's a false reality. So when you go on it and you're comparing yourself to what whoever it is that's doing and you've come away feeling bad because you aren't doing that, turn it off. Realize that what, it, what you're programming your mind with is that you're less than. What you're programming your mind with is negativity. But here's the thing. You don't know their story, baby. You don't know what's going on behind that picture you see on Facebook. That's so right. Turn off the, the news, the news never says anything positive. I, I, I think about the new Supreme Court justice. Much of what was out there was negative, mm -hmm. negative, despite all that she has accomplished. So we have to pull that the first step, first step to healing, pull back pull back and, and get yourself something positive to consume. And it can be wow. podcasts, it can be books, conversations. Yes. But but feed your, you become what you eat on yes. so many levels. Feed yourself what you need. And what you, if, if what you want is to stay in that space of not enough, uh, not, a, not good enough, less than all of those negatives, continue to eat what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Understand, but if you want that, something different, you got to change your diet, your mental yes. diet as well as your Ooh. physical. You the second person I heard talk about that diet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that diet, that diet. I mean, I've never prior to uh, last week, I never even looked at it and connected it with a mental diet. 
right? Mm -hmm. I understand I don't allow people to come in my word, but I've never used that terminology and it makes so much sense, right? So much sense. I JNA, which is journal and affirm, right? That's a constant basis for me. I, I must do that. And, um, and, and I prayer. Yes. Prayer, prayer, prayer all day, all day, all day. Yes. And I do it so much that I have these two little granddaughters and every once in a while I hear them going around the house singing, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. They get that right. One was doing it this morning. The other one was doing it on Saturday when I got home. I said, okay. Instead of all of the curse words, they get grandma's thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Right? See, so, that, that, that's what they're consuming because we can yes. going back to the power of the subconscious mind. We're yes, consuming even when we are not aware of it. You yes. pass by a magazine, you read the cover, you pass by a conversation, you hear a bit and a piece of that conversation. Um, you know, it's like you're constantly receiving information from all kinds of sources. Yes, and it is programming the subconscious mind, which controls 95% of behavior. See, we are constantly aware of 5% and we think I got it going on in this 5%, but it is the 95% that controls who you be, how you That's be, how you show Act up. up, show up and show out, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So give me a third, a third thing that they could do to bring their mind growth, <laughs> mind shift. What would you think? Okay. So my third thing is stop, breathe and reset. Now, I breathe and reset. Okay. Now, what am I talking about? Within the context of this conversation that we're having, one of the things you said is some of the things that your stepfather or your father used to say to you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and when those things are being said, you feel some kind of way, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and it makes you feel small and your energy is being constricted and compressed the whole time. And then you begin mm. to tell yourself after a while that you are the thing that they said that you were, right? Mm. And so yes, what I'm saying is you can't stop a person from telling from from speaking what they speak. You can you can move out of their energy, but when I say stop, breathe, and reset, um, between what I call the action and the reaction is a space. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. Somebody does something and you react. And we do, for most of us, we do it so quickly that we don't recognize that there's a space. But in that space is what I call the decision point. So, yes. I say you're whatever. You have an opportunity to breathe and make a decision. I'm not that. And I'm not even listening to this. Or you can just immediately, yeah. I am. Or you can, without even thinking, you begin to cower, which on a, a subconscious level, you are taking in what they have just given to you. Yes. So stop, breathe, and reset. The reset is that you get to choose who you mm. be and how you show I am yes. not the label. I am not the label. I am not what you think I am. Whatever you think I am, those are your thoughts. Praise be, you can have them. These mm -hmm. are mine. I know that I am in alignment. I know that God and I are one. I ain't confused about who I am. Yes. And so in that space between the person saying, being, or doing, and you mm -hmm. reacting, you have an opportunity to respond and stay true to who you are. Stop, yes. stop breathe, reset. Whew. Stop breathing, reset, huh? I was trying to, when, as you were speaking, I'm trying to stay in the moment, but you remind me of a, a activity I used to do with the women. It was um, it was reset in it, but it's re rebuild, reset, and rejuvenate something like that from our retreat. And I think that that it's the same thing. You know, you have to be able to go within, right? Because mm -hmm. when people put that negative chatter in your head, then you keep pushing that tape over and over and over and over yeah. again. And then before you know it, you are living up to whatever as you just alluded to you're living up to that lower level of who you are just because they told that to you or you're afraid to move forward i remember this one day my stepfather and my mother had got into this big fight and she was laying in the room and um he was fighting and i knew had i went in the room it would have been worse because he would have tried mm -hmm. to do something to me and then she would have got up and it would have been worse for her so I stayed out of it for a period of time. But then when he went outside to the car to get a cigarette, I walked in the room and her back was turned. 
And I didn't know what I was going to see when she turned around because I heard all of the rustling and tussling. But this whole time, you know, they was arguing because he kept calling me retarded. She retarded. Yo, stupid retarded. Send her over there with her dad. And she's like, no, I'm not sending her with her dad. That's my daughter and this her house. She stayed with me. But after I went and seen her, yes, she was beat up. But that whole time that I listened to him beat her, in my mind, I was playing that tape over and over again because... Yeah. I couldn't read a spell at school. I was having such a hard time in this yeah. part of my life. Everything, you know, my mother would give me orders. And because at that point I couldn't identify as being dyslexic, but I knew that I couldn't read. Right. And so she didn't even pick up on it. You know, she had her own stuff going on, but she didn't pick up on it. Right. But what it did for me was it allowed me to go in inside of my mind and it stopped me from growing altogether. I just yes. got stuck. For a long yes. time, sweetie, for a long, mm -hmm. long time. And mm -hmm. I chose unhealthy relationships. I started using drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. I was a menace to society. Then I became a teen mom. Uh, by the time I was 19, I had three living and one deceased. And so I went through a lot, a lot, a lot growing up. But I used all of that to shift my mindset as fuel for the fire. Yes. When you talk about being in a fire. I've been in a fire. Now I got mm. the fuel mm -hmm. to live a life beyond my wildest dreams. And, and mm -hmm. not just for me, but for my hot commodity, which are my children. Yes, yes, right? yes. And my yes. grandchildren and my great grandchildren, because what I do right now is going to change the way they live later. Yes. So I'm, yes. I'm going to share this, this one last story. My, my granddaughter is 16. She'll be 17. And um, she got into some trouble with her mom. And, and she said to her mom, and her mom was like, you're not going to be good in school. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And she said, well, look at my Mimi. She got two books and she's successful. I was like, don't take, look, don't use that to get out of trouble. But just, <laughs> just the fact that she recognized no matter what your trials are like, yeah. you can keep pushing. Yeah. Right? And she's seen grandma do it time and time and time again. For that, I am truly grateful. I'm yeah. grateful that you graced this stage with us and, and and you gave your nuggets because that, let me see, stop, no, breathe, stop, stop. breathe, and reset. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I want, I don't know how much time you have, but I wanted okay, to give you one more. One I more. got seven minutes. Let's go. Okay. So the, the third one is to visualize to materialize, right? Okay. And, and and you've mentioned before the affirmations yes, so many times. I did this as well. I would do the affirmations and I would go, oh, they don't work. They're not working. They're not working. Uh, going back to what are you feeding your mind? If you are consuming all of the negative stuff all day long and you're pouring <sighs> affirmations on top of it, it's like pouring oil on water, baby girl. It ain't going to stick. Right. So you got to get in the right mindset for those yes. affirmations to stick. And the other thing is that, again, going back to what you consume, if the last thing when you go to bed at night, the subconscious mind does not sleep. That's, That's when it works. And so yes. if you have been in a negative space all day long and you're looking at negative stuff before you go to bed at night, what do you think your subconscious mind is working on? Mm -hmm. When you wake up the next day and you feel some kind of way, or you're feeling down, you don't want to do this, you're feeling angry, ask yourself, what did I consume yesterday? That's right. What did I consume last night? And so in order to materialize the positive that you want, in order for the affirmations to work, you got to pull out of the negative, put in the, begin the positive thought. It is a process of rewiring your brain. Yes. You put it yes. in, begin to talk. Even though you don't yet believe it, you begin to say it. And when negative Nelly, I call my girl Nene, when Nene is saying no, no, you say, I see you, I know you, and I'm doing it anyway. I believe this, right? And and the, 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 the part that's really important is you really, when you are visualizing, you really must not see it coming, but see yourself doing it and being mm -hmm. whatever it is right now to have yes. that same excitement, that same energy. When you arrive at wherever it is you think you're going to be, <laughs> that is the energy that is, you need to embody all of that right now. Do it at night before you go to bed. Do it first thing in the morning when you wake up. Do it throughout the day. Whenever you think, of oh, this is the goal that I have for myself. Don't see yourself going, getting there. See yourself being there. 
right now. Right. Amazing. 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 You know, I live my life with that visualization and affirmations and journaling. It it's um it's taken me whew, to a place that I never imagined being invited to. Yeah. Um it, it, it seems like when you have so much negativity that's in your mindset, and every time you get to a place you say, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. Um it's it stops you it halts you right there and then what i love about my ability to learn is i said either i was too crazy to know that i was supposed to stop or i just didn't listen right <laughs> <laughs> because growing up in school i was always the one to go first and i'm the same way if i'm at a four-way stop sign everybody's sitting looking at each other shoo i go y'all want to go shoo i go y'all want to go you know i'm the first one i'll be the first one to do it because I'm willing to get out of my own way. Yes. I'm willing to get out of my own way. Because what my mother and dad instilled again, bless their hearts, they did their best. But neither one of them, uh, they they are still, well, my father's now gone. But when he passed, he was so fearful of me having my own business. But well, why don't you just work for somebody else? Because, Daddy, I don't want to. You mm -hmm. can go springs, covers, and comforters, and couches if you want to. I'm not doing that. I know what I want. I know who I am. I know whose I am. And my goal is, is to move step by step, deeper, yeah. wider, take the next step, deeper, yeah. wider. And now we're here. Yeah. So and it, go ahead. Let me say this one thing. Um, I love the deeper, wider. I just want to add that when I vision deeper, wider, I vision it as wave coming up on, on the shore at the ocean. You know, it doesn't come up in a straight line. No, you have some places where you achieve greatness and other places that you're still working on. And that's kind of the way life is. It's like that yes, ripple washing on the shore, going deep and wide. Then yes. you realize, oh, I need to work a little bit over here. I need mm -hmm. to work a little bit over there. And so yes. uh, there was a time when I thought, that I'd reach a point when I was younger, life happy ever after. There ain't no happy ever after in that way. That's a fairy tale. Right? <laughs> it is a fairy tale. Happy so recognize, recognize the fairy tale and then create the life that you desire. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. real. That's grounded I'm, with God. I love the metaphor of the wave because sometimes it come in roaring sometimes it comes in real low flow sometimes <laughs> it even lights up in yes. the middle of the night they got that thing or it comes in as a tsunami yes. so right so who knows yeah. where you are on your journey but exactly. this this process is for you to listen to a few nuggets and figure out and what i love about uh dr sue she mentioned tap into other podcasts I mean, be willing to put something else in. I was, this is my favorite thing. I tell my kids, stop listening to your own mind because uh, you can only go as far as your mind tell you to go. And um, <laughs> stop listening. It's not working. Um, and you may be already that, well, not you may be already know you sharp as iron, but if you get with another sharpener, you go, you both will be sharper. So, um, I, I thank you so much for joining our um, call to action for shifting our mindset. And um, my nugget is just that journal and affirm. And what that looks like for me and my life is in the morning when I get up, in the night when I go to bed, I think about what was my feeling today. And like today, um, uh, Dr. Sue, I said, okay, I don't know how this 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 podcast gonna go with Dr. Sue. I messed this up. I messed that up. And you are amazing. I was like, oh boy, I better <laughs> I'm gonna be in trouble. Um, because I, because again, I'm I'm that type of thinker. Like if I say I'm gonna be there at nine o'clock, and then it's nine o two. Like where you at? Because that's how I think. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. And um, what dawned on me is. There are so many people doing good work out there, right? Yes. And thank you for all that you do in the world. And thank you for your experiences and, and the strength that you bring to the Royal Table Talk. And I'm honored that you say yes uh, a few times. Thank it you so much. Been, it has so been my pleasure. Uh, 
I love your energy. I love your smile. I just thank you so much. Up. You have so much to give. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you. Look, guess what? We get to, right? Yeah. We don't have to. We get to. Yeah. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> and that's a part of a good diet right there. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> more and more. More and more. Thank you so much. And with your with with your honor, we will be talking to each other soon. Okay. Absolutely. Take all care. right. You you have a blessed day and thank you for thank you for tuning in to Royal Table Talk. Have a good day.